Peter Williams, and I'm the founder and chief strategist of Success Bully. Success Bully is an accountability practice, and that makes me a professional butt kicker. <laughs> I'm your strategic accountability partner, and I really want you, yes, you listening, I want you to accomplish your goals. So the July jumpstart is well underway, and now that you've got started or you're recommitted to your goal or you're even looking to turn it up a notch, I'm back with Sarah Blankenship, CEO of Right Sciences and founder of CEO Wattage. Sarah gives us a transparent view into her experiences with preparing and winning pitch competitions, the challenges female founders experience when fundraising, and her determination to win despite the challenges. In classic success bully fashion, we have another action item. What's your 300 words? How do you succinctly define the problem, your solution, the total addressable market, how you're going to ship it, scale it, and ultimately win. That's exactly what Sarah chats more with us about. Oh, tell me about winning the pitch competition. (laughs) Tell us about the wins. (laughs) Right. So we just won uh, the Ignite Washington's and Small Business Association pitch competition. And that was a surprise, people that think that that's really, everything's planned. That was an accident, and... <laughs> you prepared we, for uh, the accident, yes, though. There was preparation. The, yes. <laughs> so we, uh, we loved to pitch, and we had pitched in a, a, a big conference in San Francisco in April called Launch Festival San Francisco. And that's about 10, 15,000 entrepreneurs. And so that gave us uh, a feel for being in front of a, a major audience. And uh, we had three minutes for that pitch, which is like a dark art. I mean, yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> dark art. <laughs> if I hear, uh, I had a, I've had some really great coaching along the way, right? But all, all through Microsoft, after Microsoft, and then in my network, One of the ways that I prepared for the launch festival pitch was I sent a message out to the network saying, who's the best speaker coach you know? And then I would get 30 minutes. Everybody will give you 15, 30 minutes. You know, I got 30 minutes on the phone. And I could give them my script. I could give them the deck. And they could say, okay, boom, boom, boom. So I got three different opinions from three different speaker coaches to shape our launch festival pitch. And so one of the great pieces of advice I heard from one of the speaker coaches was that you have about, in natural speaking, you speak about 140 words per minute. Hmm. So if you have three minutes to pitch... Which three to four hundred words do you want to pick out of the universe of words that will best describe your product? Be careful about it. So that's a great exercise for everybody to sort of just get back down to those bare bones. What are your three hundred words? You know, and really, really know that across. What's your problem? What's your solution? What's your total addressable market? How are you going to sk- ship it and scale and win? Okay, so again, you make my head explode. <laughs> <laughs> Every conversation, you make my head explode. Come on. I have 300 words. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. What are my 300 words? Like, this is a project I'm going to work on tonight. Right? <laughs> yeah, what so it's my... fascinating. And I, you know, I want everybody to get to one page yes. of, of their strategy and 300 words 300 that best words. describes. Action their item, people. Mission. 300 words. Yeah. You have your 300 words. <laughs> Yeah. And so after going through that exercise, coming to the Ignite Washington pitch, which was just a few weeks ago, we had five minutes. So that felt like I had time in the meadow to oh, right. you could skip through the context the trees and, and tell stories. Paint the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a uh, it was ten women and the, the women who pitched were phenomenal. So it was an honor to be there and to listen and be inspired by the women connecting farm workers with better jobs in their apps, with the women making entrepreneur kits for kids, Mm -hmm. for, you know, making amazing products and services and platforms. And uh, it was funny because we we were eighth out of tenth in the pitch lineup, right? So that seems like forever when you're pitching. And then since I'm in a a cannabis-adjacent 
uh, company, we don't win awards at like a national level. <laughs> <laughs> For a number of reasons. We just don't uh, in this current climate per se. So um, yeah, we just, we just don't, you know, we don't scale like that in sort of national attention. And so when they had called up the third place winner uh, who made these amazing revolutionary earbuds and then the second place winner um, who um, made an amazing platform as well, uh, I was packing my bag to go home. I was literally just packing out my purse, oh, my snacks back in the tote yeah, bag. <laughs> leg, I'm gonna get home, you know. So <laughs> beat the rush out the door. <laughs> I was so surprised when they called our company name. I just have, you know, never. <laughs> You were packing I was, up. I was packing my bag, and the gal who was running the competition was laughing because she was like, I, you were fully packing your bag to go home. I was like, yep, yep I was out of there. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, unintentional, unexpected, but really the result of a lot of hard work and practice that got us, you know, from our three minutes, uh, from mm-hmm. our 300 words into into that win. So, yeah, that provides us with access to coaching from the SBA. Uh, We may get to go to the national competition in July. Uh, And then there's uh, just all kinds of benefits that come from from that, including meeting the governor of Washington, you know, some some legitimizing uh, activities, which are real exciting for our little company. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about your expansion. I know you're like moving and growing and you're expanding into Canada. Tell us about that. Yes. So in the past year, we've really been working on scaling. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the first year, so as you talked about, we're building. And the second year was really figuring out what business model we wanted to to use because clearly it wasn't going to be raising VC and and going that way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, And so how are we going to win? And so really we uh, came up with a a set of three or four different partnership type of approaches that we were, that we're taking. And there are, we're wholesaling our, our little patches. We are licensing our technology into um, major operators in other countries uh, and we want to be sort of like the intel inside of every patch a person might put on their body. So I don't care if my brand is on it. I don't have millions of dollars for a consumer marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just want my biotech on your body. I just want something that works, something that's lab grade, something that's consistent and quality that you're going to feel relief from every time. Uh, so that's that's sort of how we shifted from going from selling our thing to putting our thing inside of any thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we've also been uh, working on some sort of pop culture partnerships, you know, musicians and and such that might want a special special patch, you know, so we can do some some fun campaigns as well. That's so cool, celebrity activations with yes. patches, right? Oh. Snoop Dogg toured our lab in Arizona. Never thought I'd say those words. But. Please tell me you have like pics and stuff, and like uh-huh. you're like texting Snoop Dogg. Yeah, I. <laughs> you know it. No, we're, I'm way too nerdy for for the Snoop. Yeah, he's, I might text with like his uh, chief marketing officer. Yeah, but. <laughs> and so, so my other question for you. Understanding that you're a cannabis adjacent product, yes. um, how have you kind of navigated uh, leadership and growing a company in a in, in a field that's highly misunderstood and regulated? It's a very complex question because we aren't allowed to patent anything. We aren't allowed to advertise in most states. You know, we aren't allowed to. So we have to be thought leaders in ways. And other ways, so um, we're we're hosting the kinds of conferences we want to go to, that are classy and filled with non manals, you know, with all women panels. Uh, manals, <laughs> I've love. seen too many manals. I, I love it. Yeah, I would like to seen not all. go to another yeah. manal. <laughs> no more manals. <laughs> Yeah, so we uh, we've been sort of dipping our, our toes into all kinds of ways that we can become thought leaders, and that is, you know, by sort of, again like bringing together the types of minds and products and platforms that we want to partner with. Largely, they're female. You know, there's some amazing scientists and doctors and clinicians that are starting practices that are 
uh, starting product companies that are really looking at helping anybody get information or access to the types of plant materials they need. Um, and it's been inspiring to sort of be in this community of collaborators and, and build it from the ground up as well. I am consistently blown away by Sarah's BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal vision and her determination to get it done. I hope this has inspired you to take a few minutes to choose your 300 words. We all need to get back to the basics and communicate to win. Feel free to share your 300 words with me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at SuccessBully. For more information on Right Sciences, visit rightsciences.com. We're produced with love by Large Media, and that's L-A-R-J media.com. And feel free to keep up with all of my antics on my website, SuccessBully. (laughs) Dot com. <laughs> My current client roster is full, so it won't be reopening until mid-August. And so your first accountability challenge is to reach out sooner than later to book your one-on-one consultation. I'm Keita Williams. <laughs>